Now that we have seen what is an AP, GP, HP and we have also seen what is arithmetic mean, geometric mean and harmonic mean, we will be learning one more type of progression. Now you would say so we have already done three important types of progression. So what could be the next type of progression? This is a mixture of arithmetic and geometric progression. Hence the name is arithmetico geometric progression. So let us see what is this AGP or arithmetico geometric progression. So let us see what is this arithmetico geometric progression. As the name suggests arithmetico, so it will have arithmetic progression, geometric progression, so it will have a part of geometric progression. Now the terms of AGP that is arithmetico geometric progression are obtained by multiplying consecutive or corresponding terms of a given AP and a given GP. That is if we have an AP then we have a GP. Then what we do is we multiply the consecutive terms or corresponding terms. So first term of AP you multiply with first term of GP. Second term of AP you multiply with second term of GP and so on. The products so received, the products so formed will be the terms of our AGP that is arithmetico geometric progression. So students remember very well the terms of AGP are not by their own. They are found out or they are obtained by multiplying corresponding terms of an AP and a GP. So let us take or assume an AP. So let A, A plus D, A plus 2D and A plus 3D be a given AP. Correct? We already know how this AP is formed. There is a term and there is a common difference which we add to every term. Similarly, let us consider a GP. Now here we have considered the first term of the GP to be equal to 1 and the common ratio we have taken as R. So obviously our sequence of GP will be 1 into R that is R into R that is R square, R cube and so on. So A, A plus D, A plus 2D, A plus 3D are the first four terms of an AP. 1, R, R square and R cube are the first four terms of a GP. Then we find our AGP by multiplying corresponding terms of AP and GP. So we'll multiply A with 1, we get A. We'll multiply A plus D with R, we get A plus D into R. Then we multiply third term that is A plus 2D into R square. So A plus 2D into R square. We multiply the fourth term A plus 3D into R cube. So A plus 3D into R cube and so on. These products are the terms of our AGP that is arithmetico geometric progression. So in short to revise again an arithmetico geometric progression is obtained when we multiply corresponding terms of an AP and a given GP. Now that we have understood what is a AGP let us find out the nth term of the AGP. Now AGP as I said is the product of corresponding terms of an AP and a GP correct. So we multiply terms of AP with terms of GP to get the terms of AGP. So I can say that A is the first term T1, A plus D into R is my T2 second term, A plus 2D into R square is my third term T3 and A plus 3D into R cube is my fourth term T4. Now if you observe carefully when I had T1 there was 0D and R also was raised to 0 because there is no D and no R. For my T2, D was multiplied with 1, I had 1D and R is also raised to 1. So I can say 2 minus 1 times D and R raised to 2 minus 1. Similarly for T3, I have 3 minus 1 that is 2D, 3 minus 1 that is R raised to 2. Similarly for my T4, I have 4 minus 1 that is 3D and 4 minus 1 that is R raised to 3. Similarly, for my Tn, I will have n minus 1 times d and r raised to n minus 1. Thus, I get my formula for finding the nth term of an arithmetico geometric progression that is AGP 
and my nth term Tn will be a plus n minus 1 into d whole into r raised to n minus 1. So, this is the formula for nth term of an AGP. After understanding arithmetic or geometric progression, we found out what will be the nth term of the AGP. Now, let us see what will be the sum of n terms of an AGP. So, to find out sum of n terms of an AGP, obviously we will have to add all the terms, correct? So, I can say for an AGP, the SN will be summation of all the terms. We had found out the terms of an AGP when the AP was A, A plus D, A plus 2D and so on till A plus N minus 1 into D and the GP was 1, 1 into R that is R, R square, R cube, so on till R raised to N minus 1. And when we multiplied the corresponding terms of AP and GP, we got our AGP as A, A plus D into R, A plus 2D into R square, A plus N minus 1 into D into R raised to N minus 1. And now we are finding the sum of all these terms. So I have Sn as A plus A plus D into R plus A plus 2D into R square plus so on till the last term A plus N minus 1D whole into R raised to N minus 1. So this was my Sn. Let me open few brackets and let me make some more terms into it. So I can say a plus AR plus DR plus AR square plus 2 DR square. So on the last term will be A into R raised to N minus 1 plus N minus 1 into D into R raised to N minus 1 which is the last term. I call this equation number 1. Thereafter I multiply this equation on both the left and right hand sides by R. So R into SN will be equal to AR, AR square, DR square, AR cube, twice DR cube plus AR raised to N minus 1 will become AR raised to N. N minus 1 DR raised to N minus 1 will become N minus 1 DR raised to N. This I say as my second equation. Now what I do is I subtract second from first that is equation 1 minus equation 2. So, I will get Sn minus R into Sn that is Sn into 1 minus R which will cancel out several terms. Which are those terms? Here AR and A. So, AR and AR gets cancelled. This A will remain as it is. So, I have written A as it is. We have DR but we do not have DR here. We directly have DR square. So, DR also will remain as it is. Correct? AR square and AR square gets cancelled. We have 2 DR square and we have 1 DR square. So, 2 minus 1 will be 1 DR square. Similarly, if you go ahead, what will remain is DR, DR square, so until DR raised to N minus 1. Correct? Because everywhere in the first equation, the coefficient of DR raised to some power will be 1 greater than the coefficient of that DR raised to same power in the second equation. So, I will get 1 dr, 1 dr square plus so on till 1 dr raised to n minus 1. And the last terms in the second equation where r has the power n will remain as it is because in the first equation we only have till r raised to power n minus 1. Correct? So r raised to power n, the last two terms will remain as it is. Since I have subtracted this from this, that is second from first, the second last and second last term will attain a negative sign. So, this is my subtraction. I have still to find out the total expression for Sn. Let us simplify further. Now, if you carefully observe, students, these terms are in GP. They are themselves in GP. Let us take out dr as common and for the remaining terms I can write sum of gp. What is sum of gp? Sum of n terms for gp is given by a into 1 minus r raised to n minus 1 whole upon 1 minus r. 
our a when i take dr common will be 1 so the sum of gp for these terms will be dr into 1 minus r raised to n minus 1 whole upon 1 minus r correct then minus the last bracket with r raised to n now simple let us take this 1 minus r in the denominator of the right hand side so i get my final derivative or expression for sn as a upon 1 minus r plus dr into 1 minus r raised to n whole upon we already have 1 minus r so this will get multiplied i have 1 minus r the whole square minus this entire expression divided by 1 minus r the condition here that we need to take care is r should not be equal to 1 else the denominator will become 0 and then it will become an indeterminate form correct so ensure that r is not equal to 1 hence we can say that the sum of n terms for an agp is given by a upon 1 minus r plus dr into 1 minus r raised to n minus 1 whole upon 1 minus r the whole square minus a plus n minus 1 into d whole raised to r raised to n whole upon 1 minus r. Now this was the sum of n terms of an AGP. Can we find out sum of terms till infinity for an AGP? So the formula for sum to infinity for an AGP is given by a upon 1 minus r plus d into r whole upon 1 minus r the whole square. So these are the two formulas which you can use in few questions which will come on AGP, correct? And this is its simple and short derivation. Now we are going to understand some properties of summation. Summation is a symbol used to denote addition of series of terms. That is number of terms when added together by a certain rule is known as summation. So let us see some properties of summation. Let us understand few properties of summation. The first one is summation of r is equal to 1 to n of k into tr. This means that we are adding k into t1 plus k into t2 plus k into t3 and so on. This can be also written as k into summation of tr. So what we mean here is k into or summation of k into tr is k into summation of tr. So here it was k into t1 plus k into t2 and so on which can be written as after taking k as common outside we can write k into summation of t1 plus t2 plus t3 plus t4 that's what we have represented by using the symbol of summation the only condition here that you need to take care is k should be a non-zero number correct second one the second property of summation is summation of r is equal to 1 to n of ar plus br can be written as summation of ar plus summation of br correct so the summation sign can be split over ar and br separately the next one is summation from 1 to n of the number 1 is nothing but n because this is simply nothing but 1 plus 1 plus 1 how many times n times so 1 added n times is nothing but 1 into n which is again nothing but simply n from this, if I say, from this I can derive this next property where I have written summation from 1 to n of k. Now, from the first property I can say summation of k into tr was k into summation of tr. So, summation of here I can say k into 1. Summation of k into 1 is nothing but k into summation of 1. And the value of summation of 1 is n. So, k into summation of 1 will be k into n. Again, the condition that k should be a non-zero number. k should not be equal to 0. Now, from this properties of summation and from the basic definition of summation, we have derived three important results. The first result is summation of first n natural numbers is given by summation r is equal to 1 to n of r which will be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus so on till n is nothing but n into n plus 1 by 2. So sum of first n natural numbers is given by n into n plus 1 by 2. Similarly, sum of squares of the first n natural numbers that is summation of 1 to n of r square will be nothing but 
एन इंटू एन प्लस वन इंटू टू एन प्लस वन वोल अपॉन सिक्स सो दिस इज द फॉर्मूला फॉर सम ऑफ स्क्वेर ऑफ फर्स्ट एन नेचुरल नंबर सिमिलरली सम ऑफ क्यूब्स ऑफ फर्स्ट एन नेचुरल नंबर इज गिवन बाय समेशन ऑफ वन टू एन ऑफ आर क्यूब इज इक्वल टू एन इंटू एन प्लस वन बाय टू दोल स्क्वेर सो वी हैव द फॉर्मूलाज फॉर सम ऑफ फर्स्ट एन नेचुरल नंबर सम ऑफ स्क्वेर ऑफ फर्स्ट एन नेचुरल नंबर एंड सम ऑफ क्यूब्स ऑफ फर्स्ट एन नेचुरल नंबर नाउ वी विल सी सम पावर सीरीज दैट इज फ्यू फंक्शन एक्सप्रेस एज इनफाइनाइट सम ऑफ डिफरेंट पावर ऑफ x let us start now the functions which we are going to express as infinite sums of powers of x are the first one is e raised to x correct so e raised to x is nothing but 1 plus x upon 1 factorial plus x square upon 2 factorial plus x raised to 3 upon 3 factorial plus x raised to 4 upon 4 factorial plus dot 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 till infinity similarly we can express sin x as infinite sum of power of x so sin x can be written as x minus x cube by 3 factorial plus x raised to 5 upon 5 factorial minus x raised to 7 upon 7 factorial plus and so on till infinity similarly cos x can be expressed as 1 minus x square by 2 factorial plus x raised to 4 by 4 factorial minus x raised to 6 by 6 factorial plus so on similarly e raised to minus x can be expressed as the same series however we will have alternate plus and minus so first term is plus then we have minus x upon 1 factorial plus x square upon 2 factorial minus x cube upon 3 factorial Plus x raised to four upon four factorial minus and so on, right? And the last function that we are going to express as infinite sum of powers of x will be log of one plus x. The condition that we have kept here is if mod of x, that is the modulus value or the magnitude of x, is less than one, correct? So it will lie between zero and one. Then we can write log of one plus x as x minus x square by 2 plus x cube by 3 minus x raised to 4 by 4 plus and so on till infinity so if i tell you to remember it should be like this for e raised to x we have all the powers of x with 1 so 1 plus all the powers of x starting from x raised to 1 till infinity and whatever is the power in the denominator the factorial of the same number so x raised to 1 1 factorial x raised to 2 2 factorial and so on For e raised to minus x, that is the fourth function, we have the same series but with alternate plus minus. So the first term is plus, then we have minus, plus, minus, plus, and so on. Now for sin x and cos x, if you observe, what we have done is for sin x we have picked up all the odd powers of x. So we have picked up x raised to one, then x cube, x raised to five, x raised to seven, and we write alternate plus minus. So plus x raised to one upon one factorial, or simply x minus x cube upon three factorial, plus minus and so on for all the odd powers of x. And for cos x, we take the even powers of x. Now, why have we written one? Because one is nothing but one into x raised to zero even power. Correct. So yes. So all the even powers of x, x raised to zero, x raised to two, four, six, and so on, with alternate plus and minus. So it's plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, and so on. Obviously, you can remember for log of one plus x as it is again alternate plus and minus, starting with all the powers, but that is natural number powers. So all the powers should be natural numbers. So we have x raised to one. X square x three x raised to four. However, in the denominator there is no factorial sign. We only have the same number as it is in power. So it is x raised to one upon one. There is nothing but x minus x raised to two by two, x raised to three by three, x raised to four by four with alternate plus minus. So first is plus minus plus minus and so on. So now these expressions are very useful for solving various questions and sums, including and this you can prove by your mathematical induction, which will be in the last part of the chapters of the Maths two of eleven standard. So 
this is the power series. With this, the chapter of sequence and series comes to an end. Subscribe to my channel. Click on bell icon to get notification about new videos.